I'm going to give you all a little sneak peek into, what is this, the 10R, 10R80 MHC, I think the proper nomenclature is for it, the hybrid Explorer transmission. Uh, the part number for the auxiliary pump is an L1MZ 7 Paul 086 Bravo. And this is the auxiliary pump. Whenever the gasoline engine shuts off and the hybrid system kicks on, this pump turns on to create pressure for the fluid coupling in between the torque converter and however the hybrid system works. But it keeps throwing a code for this sensor being bad so it says no diag is literally needed it just says replace the sensor well that ain't fixing the problem this is the second sensor i got a hold of hotline and corporate and they're like yeah you're gonna have to get that pump out of the the pan and you're gonna have to replace it or you're gonna have to put a transmission in it depending on what parts are available and we were able to actually get the pump the other day it, there was like I think it was like 270 released to one vendor is the only people people you can get this pump for this hybrid transmission so i'm in the works of pulling the trans down now a couple 10 mils held this shield on and now i'm going to work my way around and actually uh, pull the eight mils off and then there's a series of 13s that are supporting as well so i'm going to pull the both of them off and just slowly let it down so i left this bolt in while it's been slowly draining and i pulled the 10 mil out of this cooler on this side right here I pulled the 10 mil out here and the 10 mil out here and that's just to give me a little room and I pulled the case off of this and then I used a quarter inch drive with a deep 13 and that's how I pulled this 13 millimeter bolt off now I got one more and I'm gonna slowly let the pan down so these two little rubber sleeves where are you at sucker get over here so these two little rubber sleeves go up into the bottom of the auxiliary pump right here and when you put the pan up it's supposed to I guess help seal is what I'm thinking and in the pan there's some fluid lines that go up to the front right here and these little holes that feed this front hybrid system that's run off this pressure sensor and when replacing the pressure sensor twice didn't work because there was no diagnostic chart for it that's why they said well if you replace that and you're still getting a fault code for pressure you got a bad pump and they're uh, behind on updating their troubleshooting chart and stuff like that so they said go ahead and put a pump in it if you can't get the pump in a timely manner we're gonna okay you just go ahead and put a whole transmission in it well there's no ETA on the transmission so we had to wait about a week and a half two weeks for a pump and I finally got one in now here everything is apart i'm gonna clean everything up real good pull this filter out of here because you got to pull the filter down to get the pump out of it because it bolts through the housing all right so so i got the pump out and the, the two oil filter bolts go through the pump one goes through it one goes into it to hold the oil filter up there and then it just sits in the other side and it was kind of weird the two bolts that hold the filter onto the pump i mean they're really freaking weird they look like eat they look like torx plus bolts but they're not torx plus bolts i had to take an eight millimeter and like tap it onto it to make it fit to get them off of there and then when the tool guy comes in i'm actually gonna have to try to find out what this size bolt is i've never even seen it before so it's just wiping everything down and now i'm just kind of inspecting these weird funky connectors it's like you got a side you got to slide it to the left to release the push tab down but then the one in the back you have to slide in to release the they're weird you have to look at them and try to figure it out i just got lucky and unsnapped these things on. i still don't even know how the hell i got these things unsnapped but i got them unsnapped and was able to push the tabs down you got to push them into the body um they're really weird you know the sad thing about this whole entire job is when it's all said and done and I actually test drive the vehicle afterwards, this didn't even fix the problem. They they hotline thought this would fix the problem and it never did. Yeah, so uh, probably going to have to end up putting a transmission in this thing, but it's still nice to be able to go through and show you guys uh, everything that I had to deal with on this. There's those two weird bolts that I had to take the 8 mil and, and tap them on. And then there's three sleeves. That one came with the new pump, but the two small sleeves, for some reason, the pass-throughs, did not, which is kind of weird because that may be where this pump is losing pressure to begin with. 
the way this system is actually built, the way it's got two small um, inlets in the pan where the tubes actually flow through the pan into the front of the transmission, such a stupid idea. And that's the little 8 mil that I tapped on there to get it off. And I'm showing, kind of showing you here. So I got the new pump installed. Um, got, I think they're T25s. T25s or T27 torques to hold the pump in. Now, I've got the body of the... I've, I've got the oil pan put up. And I have to leave this cover off the side on the driver's side because it gives you access, better access to the actual transmission check plug, fill and drain right there. Um, you can get it without taking the shield off, but it's nice to have it out of the way. Now I need to start putting some of this ULV fluid in there. So I just got the trans machine and I dumped five quarts to start with because that's what it said for the transpan service was start with five quarts but it actually ends up taking uh seven and a half quarts and then the bottom corner of that court when i had it turned around is the actual part number for it it's like xt12 dash ql or qulv or something but anyway i'm just pointing out here the workshop manual itself says start with five quarts for a basic filter drop so I put five in and then I go back to my main menu here and it says selection three add a quart and I just keep adding a quart adding a quart adding a quart and checking it and the five quarts at first it looked like it had it full even when the temperature read that it was warmed up but you actually have to let the transmission warm up all the way to get a good reading. Not just like when the temperature gauge on the cluster reads that it's warm. It needs to be like something like 206 degrees Fahrenheit in order for it to be checked properly or something to that level. So I was like, you know, screw that. I'm just going to let this thing warm up for a while. So I let it run for about 30 minutes, warming everything up, and then I could actually get a good reading. So I got everything... Uh, warmed up started the vehicle after I put my five quarts in it and now I'm gonna let it run a while but I turned the AC and everything on to load up the system because this is a hybrid so it will shut off and then turn back on you want to check this while it's at a idle in park and warmed up so you can get in there and get your hand on the dipstick and pull it up and measure properly when it's cold, it should be right at the tip of the measuring stick, which is between the end and number six. For some reason, Ford decided that in their infinite wisdom, they would number the stick backwards. So you're reading from six up instead of one up, which is stupid. Makes no sense at all. And optimal fill range is between 4.5 and 3 on the little hash marks of the stick. Eventually, I get it right at about 3 because 3 is the highest so I maxed it out on what could go in there. You see the shield I have on right there. It's kind of in the way. But here at first glance, it looks like it's full. It looks like it's like right on the money. Maybe even have to pull like half a quart out. But the more I let it warm up, you know, another 10, 15 minutes, all of a sudden that level dropped. And it wasn't even on the stick at all. It was still trying to thermostatically open so fluid could start flowing. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about here. Probably showing how back assward. There it is. When it's cold, it should be right at the tip of the stick. And then when it's warmed up, it should be between 4.5 and 3. And you can't see the numbers. I was trying to focus with the camera, but I really couldn't get the focus to focus on any of that. Came up a little bit. Let me check it again. I want to add some more to it. So it ended up actually taking seven and a half. Let's see if I can get this to focus. 
Anyway, here, let me read this to you. There's one, two, three, and four point five. It says as long as it's between three being max full and four point five, it's good. I thought it was good the first time I walked away, but the transmission wasn't warmed up enough. So after it warmed up and it ran more, it actually pulled in more fluid and stuff like that thermostatically. And the fluid level dropped down like crazy once everything was moving. So I had to add another quart, still wasn't on there. Then on my seventh quart, it was at about the number. See the way Ford number this is like kind of ass backwards. They should have started with one down here and went six up here, but instead they did it reversed. Six is down here and one is up here, which makes no damn sense at all. But anyway, um, once I put seven quarts in there, I was right about 4.5. And then I added another half a quart. It came up to about three. It came up to about four and a half or uh, 3.5 to three, like right in here. So now we're full. We go drive it. Hey, let's go drive this thing and get it out of our hair finally. This cop car has been a freaking nightmare. Man, I'm a little damn scruffy. Full send, right? Honestly, uh, the maintenance light came back on on the test drive last night. That's why the video wasn't released last night. And I talked to the engineer and he was like, yeah, we don't know what's going on with it. At this point, you've already you've put the sensor in twice you've put the auxiliary pump in twice there's really nothing else you can do other than putting a transmission in it we don't understand why that transmission's acting up like that when it goes into hybrid mode and then it goes to switch back into a regular gasoline mode in the middle of a, a test drive when the hybrid system's not even working doesn't make any sense at all so they're thinking something inside the transmission's faulty um causing erratic pressure or pressure not to be read properly so uh, they're worried about something being plugged up in the front side of the trans where the torque converter hybrid system lockup and everything is so they're at that point I think they're ready to just throw a trans in it but it's in their hands not mine y'all be blessed